So let's start by looking at the IV curve. So the IV curve is a very essential characteristic of a specific photovoltaic cell because all the different cells used in the market, they have all their own specific IV curves. Um, so we know that a photovoltaic cell is a semiconductor and we know that when you apply a radiance, when you uh, illuminate the photovoltaic cell with sunlight, then it produces both a current and a voltage. And the result of the current and the voltage is that you get a certain amount of electrical power. Now the, the value of a radiance, so the strength of the sun at a particular time, is the prime factor in determining what kind of an IV curve you'll get from your cell. All right, so this might sound all a bit theoretic. Let's go to the whiteboard and I want to show you what an IV curve looks like. So on the vertical axis, the IV curve normally displays the current, so the amperage that is being produced by the photovoltaic cell. And the horizontal axis, we always have the voltage. And note that it starts at zero, and the further to the right you are, the higher the voltage. And the same is true for the current, so they start at the zero, and the further up you are, the higher the amperage is. So by now you understand how a solar cell actually works, right? It's a semiconductor, and when the sun hits the solar cell, it starts to produce electricity, and electrons start to jump from one side to the other side of the cell. Now let's assume a solar cell which is not hooked up to any system yet, so it's not connected in an electrical circuit, but the sun is shining on the solar cell, and we take a multimeter, we take a digital multimeter, and we measure what kind of voltage we get between the two terminals, so the positive and negative output of the solar cell. And please note that by measuring the uh, voltage over the cell, we have not created an electrical circuit. Uh, we are just measuring what the electrical potential is between the positive and the negative. Now at this point, no current is running, but we are measuring a certain voltage, and this is the highest voltage that you will ever get from the cell under these specific conditions. So because the voltage is really high, it's all the way on the right hand side on the graph. And because it's we have not created a circuit, it's an open circuit. There's no electricity flowing, we're just measuring the voltage. It's really high all the way to the right hand side on the graph and we call it the open circuit voltage. We use the term VOC, voltage open circuit. Now for the second test, we do something different. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. Instead of measuring the voltage difference between the positive and the negative, we take a wire and we connect the positive to the negative straight. So we're actually creating a short circuit in the panel. So we're creating the short circuit and now we take the multimeter but we measure the amperage flowing through this short circuit that we have just created. So the electricity is running like crazy, it's running really fast through the panel because nothing is holding it back, right? It's just running really fast, we've created a short circuit and that for that reason the current is really high and this is the highest current that we'll ever get from this cell under these conditions. The current is really high but the voltage is really low because there's nothing, there's no resistance, there's no obstruction in the circuit. So at this point we have a really high amperage, so we're all the way high up on the graph. And at this point we call it the short circuit current, right? And the code for that is the ISC, the current short circuit. Now the interesting thing is that we have now two points on the graph. One has zero volt, but a really high amperage, and the other one has a really high voltage, but zero amperage. So you're, if you look at the, the voltage line, right, the horizontal line, we're either way at low voltage or a high voltage. So what if you would realize a different voltage somewhere between the open circuit voltage and zero volt, you would also end up somewhere on this graph. You would get a different current output from the panel. And if you take many, many different measurements between zero volts and the open circuit voltage, and you plot them all in this graph and then draw a line between them, it will look something like this. And this is the IV curve. And then right away we can identify another important point on the IV curve, basically what it's all about, and this is the maximum power point, or the MPP. So by now we know that power is the result of the current times the amperage, right? So this is a current voltage curve, and you can imagine that you want to have the highest current and the highest voltage output and balance between the two, so that you get the highest end result being the highest power output. So at this point where the curve starts to bend, this is where you get the maximum power output of a solar panel.
Now, I assume you know that if less sun power hits the panel, if you have a lower radiance value, that you get less electricity out of the panel. That makes sense, right? But the interesting thing is that the open circuit voltage of a panel doesn't fluctuate as much as the uh, the amperage coming from the cell if the irradiance fluctuates. If the irradiance reduces, the amount of current coming from the panel reduces quite a bit, but the voltage stays almost the same. The voltage reduces a little bit, but the current reduces almost proportional to the decrease in irradiance. Now, I think this is quite enough theory for now. Um, we'll use this information, this knowledge later on to continue to build our knowledge as we're going through this chapter. Uh, what I want to do now is, just for fun, I want to go online and show you a real-life example of a solar panel and of an IV curve, and I want to show you where you can find it, and I want to show you how this information can be valuable for you. So for this exercise, let's go to the website of Solbian, solbian.com. I am not affiliated with Solbian. I just find that their uh, solar panels are relatively of high quality, so the flexible ones, so both by means of the power output and uh, the overall quality of the panels. They're often used on boats in the marine world because of this reason. So let's go to products, and I want to go to solar panels. Let's select the SXX series. Doesn't really matter which one we pick for this exercise and let's download the data sheet. All right, so we are here in the data sheet. So we're looking, I want to show you an example of the IV curve and I want to show you what it can mean for you, right? So let's say that you would be interested in the solar panel and you'd want to know how the power output, how the IV curve changes under uh, changing, under varying irradiance conditions. So under low light conditions, for example. So we scroll down, there's a lot of information there. But what we're interested in is this graph here at the bottom left. And as you can see on the vertical axis, we have the current in amps and on the horizontal axis, we've got the voltage in volts, right? So you can already see that for this solar cell, for this solar module, the open circuit voltage is somewhere around 22 to 24 volts, depending on the irradiance level. And the amperage output is between just shy of two amps up to nine amps. So there's, on the, on the right hand side here, you can see six different values. They represent the irradiance, right? So the 1000 watts per square meters is the highest one and the 100 is the lowest one. So then when you look at the graph, the bottom one is the lowest one. One, two, three, four, five. Right, so the lowest one is actually the 200 watt per square meters. They don't indicate the 100 watts. So if I would be looking, if I would be interested in this solar module, I would want to know, okay, if the irradiance doubles, if it halves, if it doubles, whatever, what happens to my solar power output? So if I look at the, the lowest graph, which represents the 200 watts per square meters, I am somewhere at 1.8 amps, I would say, roughly. And then the other graph, one up, for the 400 watts per square meters, I'm getting an amperage output of around 3.7. and if you continue like this, we can go to the 600 watts, that's the dotted one, 5.3 amps, roughly. So this tells me that under varying light conditions, if the light doubles or halves, change in the power output of the panel is almost identical to the change in the irradiance, which for me, in my opinion, is a very good sign because that means that the power output from the panel is really stable, right? So if you have full sunlight, it produces full. If you have half the sunlight, it produces half of the power. Well, you might say, well, Jesse, this makes a lot of sense, right? If half of the sun power hits the panel, you get half of the power output. I agree with you, it does make sense, but it is not necessarily so for each and every panel. So some panel which you could consider to be of lower quality, uh, will actually provide less than half the amount of electrical power if you provide them with half the amount of irradiance, right? So you would see then if it would be a panel of lower quality, you would see that the IV curve, the output of the IV curve changes disproportionate to the amount of irradiance that hits the solar cell. So that was just a fun sidestep to show you what an IV curve looks like in real life and how it can be useful for you. So by now you understand...